Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Uh, I'll, firstly, I want to thank uh, the course organizer for inviting ISLM and I for this presentation. They tell me that I have only 10 minutes. I'm <laughs> supposed to be 15 minutes. Now we're <coughs> I'm talking about laboratory quality management standard, but I'm not pretending giving a presentation on a comprehensive laboratory quality management implementation in lab. I just want to share some food for thought about how to push the implementation of quality management system in a resource limited setting, particularly in Africa. I shall be looking at the importance of laboratory test result and the quality what is quality in laboratory medicine, an overview of laboratory quality management system and standard, laboratory quality management at country level and we shall look, we will look at some tool and program for supporting the implementation of quality management system. We all know that medical laboratory are fundamental pillar of healthcare system, both clinical and public health. And we know that more than 70% of clinical decisions are based in laboratory and incorrect test results can cause a lot of trouble both for clinical and for public health laboratory, we already know all this. And what is quality in medical laboratory? We have a lot of definition focusing on the customer need, but in analytical laboratory, we think that quality means to comply with specification, meant to fit for purpose. But I like this definition from WHO who said that the quality in laboratory is the right test result at the right time, on the right specimen, from the right patient, with result interpretation based on correct reference data, and at the right prices. I simply summarize it at, in the professional view, I think quality is doing the right thing right. Now the three questions are, what are these right things? How to do them right? And how to be recognized for doing the right thing right? And my communication will only talk about these three free things. How to, what are the right things? The right things are our standard, our guideline, or regulation regarding laboratories. And how to do them is to implement quality management system in order to comply with this regulation, this guideline, uh, or this standard. And how to be recognized? We have to go through a conformity assessment we will lead to ever certification or accreditation or a license for to do some work. My next talk will be on the overview of laboratory quality management system and standard. And what is a quality management system? Simply talking in the set of key quality elements that the laboratory should implement to make sure that the result that is producing are reliable and timeliness to allow public health intervention or uh, patient care. And these key elements are defined in standard, laboratory quality standard, in guideline or in regulation or technical regulation. I'm just showing you some key standard guideline or regulation in the field of laboratory. The well-known is the ISO 15189, looking at medical laboratory requirement for quality and competence. But a lot of our work in resource limit country, based on this standard and the Clinical Laboratory Standard Institute guideline on application of quality management system model for laboratory services. But also, we have this generic norm standard, ISO 9001, regarding quality management system requirement. And these standards can be applied in laboratory system. But all these standard guidelines, mainly the clinical standard, are based on the complex laboratory processes, going and workflow through the pre-analytical, analytical, and post-analytical uh, processes. And also, all these standards are based on the factor that can influence the result of laboratory testing. And also these 
source of potential failure go from a specimen, patient preparation, identification, specimen handling, the testing personnel, the human resource, the training, the competency, the number of staff, the environment, temperature, humidity, utility, and the reagent. We are just talking about the quality assurance for reagent and laboratory commodity. The testing system with the equipment maintenance, calibration, the test result, the transcription of the test result, the, uh, and the transmission of this test result. Based on all these potential source of failure, these, these standard guidelines or regulation are developed. And we all know about these 12 key quality system essential defined in the CSLI uh, quality management system document. And these 12 key elements are also addressed in ISO 15189. And these quality system essentially are talking about organization, personnel, equipment, purchasing inventory, process control, information management system, document, occurrence management, assessment, process improvement, customer service, and facility. I'm not going through all these uh, elements, but we have to look at all these elements as a system and to document and to look uh, for the connection and the relationship between all these elements to make sure that the system will well function to assure an uh, error-free testing result. And for the ISO 15Y89 also, all these management requirements and technical requirements are set to be sure that all, all processes that we are performing in our lab will result in correct, reliable, and accurate result. Apart from this standard, we have other important standard in our laboratory area. We have a point of care testing, the standard about point of care testing requirement for quality and competence. We have a standard regarding safety in clinical laboratory. We have also a standard regarding in vitro diagnostic medical devices the evaluation of stability and in vitro reagent, we are dealing with specimen containers. And other uh, standards that we should take into account for a quality management system within our laboratories. But the documentation is key to quality management implementation. Sometimes we are the bottleneck in our quality management system. And all this pyramid of documenting with at the apex of quality management or policies or processes or SOPs, the form for the record to make proof that we are implementing this quality management system. It's very important to, to develop it. And after implementing the quality management system to be recognized, we should go through a conformity assessment process that will lead us to the certification or accreditation. And this is really the, the high level, and I'm not going through this definition, you can read it after, and just make an overview of the conformity assessment. And the main challenge in some countries is the availability of accreditation body or agency. Normally we should have only one per country. This will give accreditation to Certification body, inspection body, and testing laboratory are medical laboratories. And we should have in our country or to have access to accreditation body to make sure that the process can be easily put in place in countries. But in terms of quality management system at country level, the main challenges in resource limited setting is the lack of awareness and commitment of national health authorities. Sometimes you are talking about <laughs> this. And weak or little regulatory or quality management framework put in place in country in terms of um, strategic planning, in terms of including quality in lab policies, inappropriately equipped service facilities, the training, the biosafety, biosecurity measures are weak, and also we have a serious problem of metrology infrastructure for equipment calibration, for equipment maintenance. Sometimes you want to just calibrate a micropipette. I know one of our 
research center in Burkina Faso for calibration and verification of micropipette, we have to send the micropipette to Belgium. Maybe we should have, we should manage to have at least some center in Africa to ease this process. But the key strategic action will be advocacy and sensitization, the formal designation of national quality officer or unit or focal person, the integration of quality in national laboratory regulation, policy and plan, and development implementation of national laboratory plan, quality plan, and maybe the adoption of international implementation strategy. We can also, sometimes we lack standard. We can either approve or endorse international standard like Ghana, we approve, we approve, we endorse the international ISO 15Y89. EQA program, training, mentoring program, and equipment calibration maintenance center for metrology purpose. Now quickly, just give some example of tool and program for the lab quality management system implementation. Because sometimes in resource limited country we are facing a dilemma because this international standard that exists sometimes not really feasible or realistic for some laboratory for intermediate of district level. And sometimes we have to leave them an all or nothing situation. And I think this, the strategy for the stepwise approach for setting this quality management system, I don't think we have to design a substandard for Africa. I don't think we have medicine for Europe and medicine for Africa. We have to follow this international standard by, by choosing a strategy, a stepwise strategy. The first tool is the WHO Laboratory Quality Stepwise Implementation Tool, also based on ISO 15189 and also the 12 quality system essential, where it's a step-by-step -step mentoring system implementation process that will assist the laboratory for implementing the quality management system. The other two is SLM WHO Afro Slipta for the stepwise laboratory improvement process to our accreditation. Also based on ISO 15189 and also the 12 quality system essential. It's based on a checklist with these 12 sections each section is scored, and according to the score that you get through this audit, you will grant zero star to five star. The governance of this uh, system is based on ISLM is acting as a secretary for SLIPTA, and the other stakeholder is uh, Minister of Health SLIPTA Focal Point, WHO Afro SLIPTA Focal Point, the Certified Auditor and SLIPTA Independent Advisory Group. And the process is just training and certify the auditor and audit the lab and grant a certificate at the end of the process. And this is the, uh, the audit cycle. <coughs> the laboratory who want to be enrolled in the process submit after self-assessment should submit his dossier and ISLM will review the application, send certified auditor for the, the process. This is just a summary of what has been done since 2013. Uh, 298 laboratory audited and certified, uh, certified with the distribution of star level within Africa. You can rem remark that it's mainly from English speaking country. We only have Cote d'Ivoire and Cameroon. Then we have to push for the other part of Africa. This slip tie is different. <laughs> I just see two slides left. This slip tie is different from slam tie. The strengthening laboratory management toward accreditation is a task-based training and mentoring toolkit provided to a laboratory personnel in multi-workshop implementation model. It's quite different from slip tie. It's like the laboratory, like LQSI. And this is the web link for this tool. And now ISLM is seeking for collaboration with partner for the implementation of a slip down process in Africa. And if partner are interested, you can contact the focal point for this slip down for 
the implementation process. I think I didn't let a lot of time. Thank you for uh, listening.